Here we go. Watch out for the smoke, by the way. You'll notice there is fire. You can put that out by dumping water on it, but I'm gonna get this shut off before something goes interesting. Welcome to Bad Idea Garage, and today I'm gonna show you how to do this with this from a microwave. Let's get into it. All right, this is what we're starting off with. I got this thing for free. I think she said it worked, except for the turntable on the inside. It's in good shape besides the scuffs from rolling around the back of the truck. Got it plugged in, I got a bowl with some water in it. We're going to give this thing a shot. If I can figure out how to make this one work and see if it works, because if it doesn't, we cannot use the transformer out of this thing for our burner. So, we're gonna let that cook for a bit. Okay, let's see. Ooh, I don't know if you can see the steam on the video, but it's definitely hot. Cool. So we got us a working microwave. Now let's get it ripped apart. Okay, so I gotta figure out where the hell it's actually at. Um, I think all the other ones I've done, they were on the bottom. So I'm gonna start busting out these screws. Try to get that off and I'll show you what part we're looking for. So a couple of these are these uh, keyed Torx bits. Um, I don't have any issues with those with just a regular Torx anyway. Uh, if you don't have one of these, by the way, they come in super handy, especially for small stuff like this. So they come off pretty easy. Now we need to pry the bottom off. That shouldn't be all that difficult. <laughs> But I don't know if I can do it with one hand. Here we go. Let's see. All right, I'll be right back. I think I need both hands for this. Okay, so I got all that pried off. This is the part we're looking for here. Discharge capacitor, talking about that right there. Those things hold a lot of voltage, so you don't wanna just grab this stuff without making sure that is uh, has been sitting for a while with no power to it. I uh, also try to remember which wires went where over here because we need those. This here is going to be our ground, I believe, and that should be our power. We are going to need to know that when we wire in our plug. We're just going to reuse that. Uh, probably get a switch for it. Control board and everything's back there. We don't need any of that. We just need this. So let's get to it. Okay, so since we got the transformer out there, we're gonna steal a few things. These were our power wires going into it before. Uh, we're probably just gonna make use of them again to go into the same spots. I'm going to remove our plug here and we're just gonna use that. Then I need to go to the store and grab a few things that I'll show you here in a little bit to make this work the way I want. Conventionally, the way I've done this before is I've just had the plug in there. When I was done using it, I would unplug it, but I'd much rather have like a light switch to do that with. So I'm gonna work with that this time. Now over here, these terminals are gonna be connected to our power plug. We can pretty much get rid of these. If you're not familiar with how these things are set up, this exposed coil here, that's the low voltage. Don't really care about that. All we're worried about is high voltage output. Notice there's only one lead for high voltage. We're gonna connect this to one of our wires that's gonna go to the ends, uh, probably use alligator clips. And the second one, we are just going to ground to the body through one of the screws. I am gonna get a piece of wood to mount this thing on. This is my freestyled table, so we're not gonna use that. So I gotta find me a piece of wood. I gotta clip those off. I gotta get the other pieces off. I have to get the power cord off and go from there. So give me a sec, I'll be right back. Okay, so here's some of the stuff I got at the store. We got a light switch, a plate cover just in case, I guess, I don't know. Uh, and some finishing nails, you'll find out what those are for later. I also got a couple of these alligator clamps. I'm gonna clamp those onto the finish nail. You gotta undo that screw and then bend the solid copper wire around, like, I can get it off, like so, before you screw it in. I don't remember what gauge wire this stuff is that I bought. It's just red and small enough to fit in my clamps. So I didn't pay that much attention. 
Have them connected with some butt connectors there. Same thing over here. That way I can unhook them if I ever need to. I went with solid wire because it tends to carry it a little bit better. I think we'll be okay with this, uh, this wire here. We just have that grounded to the body. Uh, remember to sand this section here if you are going to do something like this so it'll actually connect. Next, we just gotta hook up our power source here to our switch. Uh, an electrician, I am not, so I am going to try to figure out how to do that. And I will be back in a little bit. Also, Beastie says hi. Hey, Beastie. All right, we got, I think, everything set up right. Uh, disclaimer here, by the way, don't do this unless you have at least some understanding of how electricity works. Uh, I know I made the comment about the light switch, whatever. It's actually easier for me to just hook this straight into a plug, but I wanted to switch this time. So yeah, don't do this. This thing can do a myriad of things. Uh, one, obviously it's gonna run electricity through stuff and it's going to work properly, but you don't wanna touch the leads. Two, uh, it doesn't work at all. Uh, three, something goes horribly wrong and the thing pops. Or four, you run it for too long and let it completely short circuit out which you'll be able to tell. I'll see if I can get the sound difference on camera and the thing catches fire. So don't do this if you don't have any idea how electricity works, but I'm gonna show you what we got. Okay, so we got our switch wired up. The green one is the safety ground. As our black and white are our power and ground. We got those hooked up into the appropriate spot. Uh, the switch, I did just use a random piece of what I found. The switch I just have screwed into the board. I'm not going to put that thing on yet. I'm going to wait and see if it works first. We have our leads. I already showed you. Ground needs to be down there, and this obviously needs to be tightened, I just noticed, so I'm going to do that real quick. We've got our quick connectors here, and from there, all we need is a piece of wood to burn. This is where your finishing nails are going to come in handy. You just kind of tap them in. The alligator clips here are just going to clamp onto the finishing nails. That'll transfer the electricity into the wood, in theory. Uh, in the past, I've just used the bare end of the solid wire and sat it on there. Then you're going to want some water, and that is not sugar or flour. That is the cheapest baking soda I can get. You can just use regular water, but it really doesn't make a great connection. That baking soda is what is going to help the current flow through everything. Uh, you could also just soak the piece of wood first and then sprinkle the baking soda on top of it. I've done that too, but I'm going to get this thing soaking here. I think I'm going to set it down there on my plastic sawhorse. And also you do this, make sure you have rubber boots on and don't stand in any residual water that might have dripped off your piece because that spells a bad time. Okay, we're plugged in. It didn't start right off hand, that's a good sign. Let's see if we can do this without dying. Go. Nothing. I think I tripped my breaker. Okay, something's up with the switch, because once I wire it direct, it does what it's supposed to. That time to turn it off now. Okay, I figured out the problem. Uh, I was thinking automotive switch where things are linear to each other here, but apparently you want the things on the same side. So, for instance, the white wire needs to be on the same side as the white wire, not across from it, vice versa. We're just going to leave that ground off. We are deliberately short-circuiting this stuff in the first place, so I'm not really worried about that. But, you can hear it buzz and see it go. There's little zappy zaps. See? I have no idea how toxic that smoke might be, by the way, so probably don't breathe that in. I'll show you a finished project here. Pro yeah, finished um, product here in a little bit. You can see the stuff climbing towards each other. When those arcs meet, the whole sound changes, and that means you've connected and you need to shut it off. I don't know if it's going to do it for me or not. It's getting close. Check it out. And there. Once it connects, that means you're shorted. And you'll just burn that up if you keep going. So, I'm going to let that cool off. Uh, and I am going to try to wash it off and clean it up a little bit. I'm not sure I like the finishing nail idea. I might go back to the bare leads. But, give me a sec. 
Okay, we're gonna do this again just so you have an idea of what I mean when I say you can splash water on it. Whenever you get fires going, or if you lose your connection, you get your water, stay well away from it, and just kinda splash it down. And keep it under control that way. That's the idea anyway. Sorry, I had to cut that one short. Uh, one of the leads came off because I didn't get the finishing nail very deep into the piece of wood. And I didn't like that situation. So I stopped so I could turn the thing off. But that's the idea. Do not get too close to it. Don't have a solid stream of water going from your bowl to what you are pouring it on. And just use enough to put out the fires. Future blurry me here. Uh, I realized there's a few things that I didn't quite explain properly in the video. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop a comment below and ask and I will answer it. Anything from how much baking soda to use to what the point of the baking soda is because I didn't explain that very well. Uh, and why the high voltage coil versus the low voltage coil matters and where the wires going to the switch matter. Drop a comment if you need something answered if you want to try this. But again, do not attempt this if you don't know what you're doing. This will kill you. All right, here is our finished product. So to clean this stuff up, because it has a lot of charcoal in there, even that there, I didn't get all of it out. Uh, the easiest way to do it is just run warm water over it and use a soft bristle brush and just scrub while the water's washing over it and then pat it, don't wipe, pat it dry with a paper towel. If you try to wipe, you can see a couple of smears there. That is going to happen over everything. And then you have to do some sanding to clean it all up. I'm mostly happy with the finished product here. I don't know if I like the finishing nails because those are much deeper gouges than uh, I ever got when I was using bare leads. So one way or another, I'm going to practice a little bit more on another small piece. See if I can't uh, refine it a little bit better and just make sure this thing ain't going to blow up. But I'm going to do that on my own time. A um, couple of notes that I forgot to mention while I was doing this. You really want the water to soak into the wood. The longer it soaks, the uh, more consistent of a pattern you'll get, and you won't have to dump water on it to keep the electricity flowing. Um, when, if you are going to dump water on it, you can do that. Just make sure that you are more like splashing it over it. Stay well away from the piece and make sure the water that you are dumping onto it to put out whatever little fires you might have uh, does not have a solid stream all the way up to the bowl you're holding because that is probably going to be a bad time. I've never done it, so I don't know, but I would guess it's probably not probably not fun. So that's going to do it for this particular video. I know this was a smaller project this week. I think I'm going to start uh, piecing together the go-kart videos and also trying to finish the go-kart, so look for those coming soon. But for now, I'm going to say peace out. Thank you for watching, and if you have any other big ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a good week.